So today's discussion is going to be primarily about um, religion, uh, specifically creationism, uh, versus, uh, I guess, abiogenesis, cosmology, Big Bang Theory, evolution, all that kind of stuff. Um, specifically, we're going to be talking about which uh, claim is better, uh, which has more reasons to believe, um, which one should be believed by a prudent individual um, and which ones we sort of can't draw conclusions about just yet uh, but are still working on. So I'm uh, Tim Farrell and my lower third should be on now but it's not working so give me a second. Um, and my intellectual opponent today will be... Uh, can you say your own name because I'm going to butcher it. <laughs> Is it Andres? Andres, Andres, ah, thanks. I didn't expect to be your intellectual opponent. I'm honored. Thanks. <laughs> awesome. So thank you very much for joining me. Um, everybody else in here is going to be observers, but they're welcome to uh, talk in the chat if they would like. All right. And I think I'm going to make it uh, blue. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm going to leave that off. You know who I am. I'm the awesome guy with the gif of not me. Um, okay. So, uh, we've agreed, uh, Andres and I, uh, prior to joining this room, that if we come to a point where um, we've reached an I don't know, which is to say, if we get to the point in the discussion, like, for example, say, uh, what is a fairy made of, or something like that, and the answer is, I don't know what a fairy is made of. That doesn't mean that a fairy uh, was created by God or, or, or something like that. And um, it also doesn't mean that a fairy evolved. You know, so neither of us, either in either direction, can claim that a lack of knowledge is equal to knowledge of that that our position is correct. So we can't use I don't know as an argument. Um, however, I don't know is an acceptable answer for some things. All right. So beyond that, it's kind of uh, free reign. Uh, Andres, uh, I believe that your claim is of the creationist persuasion, so I'm going to go yes. ahead and let you make your claim, and I will uh, stay silent. I'll mute myself, and you can uh, take as much time as you need, up to like 10 minutes or something, and then I will respond. Sure. Thanks, Tim. Um, uh, I would like to start off to thank you by saying that... When you opened this conversation, you said we are talking about creation and the belief in religion opposed to, and then you mentioned evolution, etc., etc., etc. What I liked about that statement was uh, that you, I hope, admitted that both comes down to a belief. At least that's what I took from it. I'm not sure if that's what you meant, though. So if you can just clarify that uh, uh, before I go on. Sure. Um, and I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to respond point by point. That's how a great discussion goes, um, I think. Uh, so uh, I didn't mean that both necessarily come down to a belief, which is uh, to say a belief without evidence. Both mm -hmm. are beliefs. But um, I believe one side has evidence and the other side does not. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe the creationist side does have evidence, and mm. I'm just not aware of it. And if that's so, I'm open and, and welcoming you to present that today. Um, however, uh, I, I wouldn't call it just a belief. I would call it, it is a belief, but I would call it a well-founded, um, evidence-based belief. Okay. Okay. So what's, what I would like to uh, uh, propose, or what's, what I'd like to uh, put forward today is to say that, uh, right, it's two worldviews, okay? We have a worldview that assumes there is a God. And then we build our uh, theory and our belief system and even to a point our science from that worldview. And just as in the same way as... A, a as you has have a, have a worldview in the sense that you 
choose to believe that something came to be something from in a way okay for me that's I can I'm not trying to try and explain what you are believing but they they said that you have a you have a a reason uh, a theory no no let's not use theory you you have an idea that you choose to believe how everything came to be and you built your science from that starting point uh, the Big Bang whatever and my my I'm not strong on the on the uh, scientific side of this uh, debate because I'm not a scientist I'm a lingua far um, but my uh, uh, hypothesis my 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 result in my own belief system is that there is more reason to believe in the creation side and my first point would to open this would be morality how do you explain morality okay and shall I respond to that now sure. okay so and and everything I said to, if I if I said something uh, that if I misattributed something to you okay um, so I'll respond point by point just so you know I'll be taking some notes here on what you say uh, because I want to let you totally finish your point I don't want to interrupt you but I do also want to respond point by point so I'm going to take some notes and then I might not directly answer your question I'll answer some things that you said before and then I'll answer your question mm. so um, <clears throat> the, the first thing you said uh, that I had a world view that something came to be um, from and I, I assume what you're going to say is something came to be from nothing I just want to clarify that that's uh, not what we believe a lot of other people believe that that um, the, the view of science is that something came from nothing. That's the point that I was talking about, actually, that, that we were going to get to the I don't know point. I mm -hmm. don't claim to know where the, the, the matter of the, of the universe came from. Um, we have some good ideas come about from string theory, and we know that the average energy of the universe is zero, meaning that for something to pop into existence with a corresponding equal and opposite amount of uh, cosmological constant energy dark energy, vacuum energy, negative energy, um, which is the repulsive energy of the universe that pushes things apart instead of just pulling them together. Um, that is, is hypothetically possible, um, but that's a hypothesis, not a theory. Mm. So it's not as well founded as, say, evolution. So again, uh, for that, I would just say, I don't know for certain, and, um, and I would leave it at that for mm. the origins of the universe. But I would also want to point out for any of our viewers that some, when I say I don't know, that doesn't mean that God did it. If, one is, mm. if someone were to go and claim, therefore God did it, then I, I would need to see evidence, or some, you know, we would need to see evidence that God did it for that claim to be valid. You can claim it as completely faith, but you have to recognize that that's what you're doing. You're claiming without evidence. And that's fine if you do that. So that's mm. my response to that point. Um, next, you also said that I have an idea about how the world came to be and that I built my science from that starting point. And mm -hmm. I assume that that origin story you're thinking of that I built my worldview and my science on, that I assume you mean we, humanity, built our science on, um, is the Big Bang. And mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, that's not true. Um, in fact, we started with creationism and science like a candle in the dark, to quote Carl Sagan, took us out of the dark ages. Science turned everything we knew on its head. Science gave us answers. The answers were things like the Big Bang. We didn't take the Big Bang as an idea and build science from it. We used science to decipher the Big Bang from the evidence at hand, specifically things like the, micro, the cosmic microwave background radiation. Um, so your question was, um, uh, something about there's a reason to believe in, oh you, you claim to believe that there was um, I'm sorry you claim that there was reason to believe uh, in the creation side I would be um, curious and, and I am interested to hear uh, any uh, reasoning you have there and we can go further in that um, did I answer your question already? I may have forgotten yes. your question <laughs> one thing uh, I may uh, how do you how do you uh, Explain morality. Oh, morality, right. Thank you. I forgot to write that down. 
Um, so morality uh, is there's two part there's two ways that I want to respond to this. One, morality evolved into us. Um, you can see that animals that um, that live and hunt and exist pretty much alone, um, te or or which don't rely on a social group, tend not to have as much a sense of morality as animals that do. Um, but mm. animals that do live in social groups, such as apes, for example, definitely have a sense of morality. Apes, mm. um, there was a documentary that I watched recently that showed um, apes, they, uh, it wasn't apes, actually it was chimps, I think, but kind of closely related still. They live in a social group. Mm. Um, and some of them would go and hunt and find these little eggs but to do that, they had to have lookouts. So the lookout monkeys would stand higher up, while the other ones lower down would go and search for eggs in this like crocodile or alligator infested area. Yeah. And when they were successful, it worked out for everybody. When they were not successful, it didn't work out for everybody. But once in a while, what you would see is the lookout apes would go, oh my gosh, a freaking crocodile or whatever is coming and would sort of sound the alarm, and everybody else would run off, and then they would run down and grab the eggs for themselves. And that worked out for them personally, but didn't work out for everybody. And as a result, when they found out, the social group beat the crap out of the monkey, and I think they killed him, uh, the monkey that, um, that took the eggs for himself. Mm -hmm. And that is the origin of our morality. Those who are quote-unquote moral who don't lie, who don't cheat or steal or betray their social group, survive better because otherwise the social group would destroy them, thus eliminating their genes from the gene pool. And the second part of my two-part answer as to the origin of morality is if you mean where does it come from in us, then the answer is physically, electrochemically, in our brain. And I can prove that to you, I think. Um, if if you are a very, mm, very moral person, you never cheat, you never lie, you never steal, you never uh, say fuck or shit or shitting dick nipples or anything like that, um, and you would never punch your mother in the face. I can stick an electrode in your brain in a very specific region. I don't necessarily know what that is, but presumably I could fiddle around in your head until I find it, that would make you say shitting dick nipples and punch your mother in the face and do anything else pretty much that was horribly immoral. Mm. Now, I want you to also think of this as another part of my response to your question. That's not just morality. That's everything. That's what makes you, you. So imagine this. In the same way that we can stick an electrode into your brain, you can take pills that electrochemically change your brain, which changes you as a person. Now, I assume you believe in a soul, and if I'm wrong, please go ahead and interrupt me and, and correct me. Um, but if you believe in a soul, presumably you believe that the soul has some characteristics of you. I would believe if my soul is me surviving my death, then the, th the thing that is me would have to survive. And the thing that is me is my memories, my mannerisms, my personality. If I don't have any of those things, oh, he left. <laughs> I'm going to... He left. Um, he disappeared. He did. He gave, gave in. <laughs> yeah. Um, you don't think he lost the connection? No, no I think he just um, got booted. Uh, well, I do need to go to bed, but okay. I, I'd kind of like to jump in on that, not necessarily on air, not really my thing. Okay, if <laughs> you want, you can ch you can chat, or we can pick it up later if you write it down and, and remind me. I'd be glad to talk to you, with you about it later okay. off air. Well, I'll just hit this, but um, real quick. Oh, he's back, he's back. Oh. Okay. Our. Hello, Andres. All right, uh, if I can have everybody else in the room mute again, please. Um, and thank you for coming, Nate. I'll talk to you later. Uh, it's always great talking with you. Right. Um, so, Andres, um, 
Sorry, I, I, uh, my connection got out. I'm in northeastern China at the moment, and the internet is very, very bad. No problem. So, so if, if, I, if I vanish at some point, please don't tell that against me. Not a problem. Not a problem. I assume you just disconnected. Mm -hmm. um, so a as I was saying, um, if not just uh, electrodes in your brain, but you can take a pill, you can do all kinds of things that change your electrochemical makeup and your mood and mannerisms. Um, I can alter your memories with drugs, uh, with chemicals, naturally occurring chemicals in your brain, in fact. You can receive physical brain damage that blocks memories or allows you to manifest new memories. Schizophrenics can manifest all kinds of things which are registered as, as memories and, and, uh, and, and as reality. So if I were to go to heaven, me, the thing that I think of as me, which is my memory, my, person, my memories, my personality, and my mannerisms, those are the three things that I need at least one of them to be considered me. All of those things can be changed by physically, electrically, or chemically altering my physical brain. Now, when I die, my physical brain dies. So think of it this way. If I was born with a chemical imbalance that caused me to be depressed or schizophrenic, and I controlled that with medication by chemically altering my brain, which me is my soul? It's a sort of an unanswerable question, but it's something to think about. Which me would it be? The schizophrenic me? The natural me? I wouldn't want to live forever as a schizophrenic person, especially if I'd had it controlled and had sound body, uh, body and mind for a while and knew what I was missing. I assume God wouldn't let schizophrenics, um, wouldn't let you be in heaven as a schizophrenic. I assume he would try to fix you, but then are you really you if you don't have the same personality? mannerisms, memories, and it's not a matter of being a perfect you, because a perfect you is, I mean, what is that? Everybody's perfect them is entirely based on their environment, their situation, their what drugs they're taking, uh, what they had for breakfast, if it's a bad day or a good day, if it's sunny outside, etc. And, uh, and so those are my two responses to the origin and existence of morality and feel free to respond. Thanks. So, uh, I would like to get you back to the first part, uh, if I may, the, um, where you uh, said uh, uh, this is a social evolvement. Um, so, should I decide on what is right and wrong, and I'm going, just by the, as a side note, I'm going, at the later stage, I'm going to get back to our initial discussion about the the origins of uh, the universe, but uh, for now, uh, to choose between right and wrong, should I uh, uh, make that de decision upon uh, in whichever, whatever social group I am moving in? Um, I think that it's clear that we do indeed do that. I think that that is the correct thing to do. Um, for example, there are major things which clearly cause harm, like murder, and those can be generally regarded as negative in any social group. But there are many things that are specific to a social group. In some cultures, um, women wearing pants is immoral, and even many women would agree, especially in that culture, many women would agree that that's immoral. But I don't think it's immoral. Um, so morality is absolutely subjective. However, there are things that everyone can agree upon, um, like things which directly harm other people, which is obviously, again, part of our evolutionary heritage. That if you harm the social group, it won't protect you, and probably the social group will either extradite you or annihilate you. So that's my okay. response. So, 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 say I, I'm moving between the Nazi high command in, I have to go there, sorry, in uh, 1940, and I'm part of the I command, and uh, and the topics come up: uh, should we kill another million or two million Jews? Uh, I should say then yes, we should. Uh, because that's the culture at the, at, in that situation. You're saying? Yes. Um, no, because that that has clear and obvious harm to another person. Um, so things things like that, which clearly harm uh, another person, are are obviously negative. Um, however, 
that person is not a member of your social group. So it, it, the, the way evolution works with things like that is that evolution can't know that you're, you know, going to be separated into the Germans and the Americans and things like that. Evolution just works on the now. And if, if a genetic modification or genetic alteration or mutation benefits you in the now, then bada bing, you're naturally selected for. Um, however, um, it can't foresee things like that. So the fact that we have a guttural negative reaction to killing someone of another social group that is a misfiring of evolution. Evolution is there to protect your social group from you and to protect you from your social group. However, at the same time, overly aggressive mentalities, so uh, say there's too many people in a social group that are aggressive toward other social groups, are more likely to have their entire social group annihilated through uh, negative interaction like war or you know feuding. So, I can see where there's an evolutionary imperative for being generally not shitty to people, um, even if they're not part of your social group. So it's kind of a complex answer. Um, short answer, no, because it harms people. Okay. Uh, I, I didn't understand the long answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> you have to be with, uh, be some patient with me. <laughs> sorry um, about that. No, it's okay. Um, but maybe you can uh, more go into more detail with that if I reply by this to your short answer, so why is it wrong to harm other people? Because if you harm other people, whether they're, uh, if, if you harm other people in your social group, your social group will annihilate or extradite you, so you're more likely to die. If you harm other people in another social group, then your entire social group is more likely to be eliminated. So if we think of a social group, because you usually mate within your social group, if you think of your social group as its own separate gene pool, then you can see how evolution can act on that as an entire gene pool. So like one gene pool attacks another totally separate gene pool in the same way that one person who's an individual gene pool would attack another person. So if your group is overly aggressive, then the, the groups that you're being aggressive toward um, would would kill you, basically. So it's the same problem, is that you frickin' die. <laughs> and okay. dying is generally bad. Okay, no, that's, that's okay. Yeah, that is. Uh, I agree with you. Um, uh, especially if you don't have your things in order. Um, but say, say I'm, a, I'm a very, very sly, sly bastard. And um, sorry for going hypothetical. I, I need to understand how I, th I think about this. That's because okay. that's crucial to my thinking of this. Um, uh, I'm a very sly bastard, and yeah, I'm part of the of the smaller or or the uh, uh, group that is fine to be killed and killed from another group. I'm part of this Nazi command, and uh, we think it's fine to kill Germans, Nazi, uh, Ge uh, to kill Britons and uh, Americans and whoever. Uh, but we realize we cannot do that in the open daylight because then every gun is get get pissed with me. Um, but what if I'm a sly bastard and they employ me to do this uh, so that no one can find out and make it look like accidents? Should I do it or not? Well, the matter of should you is, um, you know, clearly sort of subjective. Um, but, I mean, from an evolutionary standpoint, it could go either way. In reality, of course, we know everyone is brought up by their social group to say no. But, but I think that what we're getting at here is that there is no objective morality. There is no, um, there is no central authority on morality, which is why these horrible things can be justified by these people. They can be justified to themselves. Other people would look in and say, that's unjustifiable. But obviously, they can justify it to themselves because morality is not objective. It's subjective, though there are some things that we can all agree on, except for a few dicks. Um, so it being subjective um, also means that, that um, 
that we have to kind of decide for ourselves on a lot of things. For example, stealing. Stealing is wrong, but what if you're trying to feed your family, and if you don't steal some bread, they'll die? Well, then it's obviously right. So it's, it's very situational and very subjective. I'm, I'm a South African, and uh, uh, the such a political situation in South Africa is not too good for uh, white people generally. Um, not to make too much of it, but uh, people get murdered at a, at a very high rate, and uh, it's for the for the in this situation the, the the social norm it is the government prohibits people shooting or murder, killing anyone or harming anyone if they don't threaten their life so if i wake up in the middle of the night and there's a black guy in my room and he is uh, pointing a gun at me and my wife i am not allowed to hurt him until he has hurt me okay so that's the law um, in that situation, of course, I would take up my gun and shoot the bastard and throw him in the nearest uh, uh, mine uh, <coughs> to preserve myself. And I was debating this with another evolutionist, and uh, uh, he didn't want to go in on this point, and I'm glad you, that you did. Because for me, that showed, th and you said what I, I'm believing, that there's no, uh, if you, if you, there's no objective uh, 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 guideline for morality. So, so yeah. everything can be right if you, as long as you you're among the right people. Or everything can everything can be wrong as long as you're in the wrong people or in the wrong group. I agree. I think that there are things which are clearly negative for the group as a whole, um, but one can still choose to make those decisions in certain certain circumstances if it you know if the if the good outweighs the bad. Or if you're indoctrinated into a culture of, you know, some, you know, something like um, the Nazis. Mm. Okay, so so now, th and this is my one point uh, why I, uh, uh, when I choose, I have to choose a, a worldview. I favor uh, Christianity. I favor creationism because uh, there's a cl clear set of rules, and of course, this can be applied to any religion, but. Uh, they said there's a clear set of rules of what is right and what is wrong. And I cannot change that, and my group cannot change that, because it comes not from us, it comes from the outside. That's what we believe, it comes from God. So it's un, uh, 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 undebatable, unchangeable, and it is steadfast. So would you agree that that gives more... Uh, 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 steadfastness to the decision what is right and wrong um, no and and the reason that I wouldn't agree is because you have within you an inbuilt moral compass which is relevant to the time in which you live and it's relevant to your your social group and your personal feelings and your genetics as well um, so the morality in the Bible includes things like, um, well, for example, you're not supposed to wear mixed fibers. You're not supposed to, you know, work on the Sabbath. You are supposed to kill children if they are misbehaving and don't, you know, obey their 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 parents. You're supposed to stone them to death. Um, you are supposed to um, kill atheists if they would lead you astray, such as myself. I'm assuming that you're not trying to kill me right now, and therefore. I know that you've you've read that book, and I hope that you've read that book, and um, and 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 you're you're choosing not to obey that rule, that that thing that God said to do. Um, and furthermore, no, I it's feel, not. I don't feel let us try at the moment. Don't don't flatter to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and, and it's not just things that God told you to do or not to do in the Bible. Um, it's also things which he himself did in the Bible, which are moral stories that no one would look at as positive. Um, for example, when a bunch of shitty kids came along and were making fun of a dude because he was like, I don't know, bald or something, and... Mm -hmm. um, and he sent a bunch of bears to frickin' eat the kids. What the hell? Or, you know, uh, 
towns where people were, you know, people were gay in the town, like Sodom and Gomorrah, people were gay, okay. and so he just nuked the town. And then a woman looked back at the town, so he annihilated her as well. I, I mean, that's not a good so moral teaching. That's not my, that was not my question. My question is, isn't it more steadfast? More consistent? Oh, yeah, consistent. Sorry, English is not my first language. That's okay. Um, consistent. Um, yes, it is more consistent in the same way that, um, you know, if you followed the moral teachings of Harry Potter, it would be more consistent. However, there are ways in which I think it's also more inconsistent because you're, or at least exactly as consistent, because you're still applying your own morality. There are no morals that you get from the Bible or from religion that you couldn't or don't already have, or couldn't or haven't already learned from your social group. Um, and so I think that's an important point, because by choosing not to follow all these other moral teachings in the Bible, and I, I would even venture that the majority of them uh, you wouldn't follow. Um, by choosing not to do that, you're essentially verifying that um, you know you have your own moral compass. Mm -hmm. So while you, yeah. while you would say that that you're following the morality in the Bible, if you look at the rules laid out and the examples in the Bible, you're you're really not following that example. Well, that uh, you can you can uh, you have to give me some leeway there because uh, um, uh, you have to look at the the Bible as a whole, not as a, 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 a you know the the part where uh, Satan tries to um, seduce seduce the right words, try to seduce the Lord, and uh, um, tries him to say, well, it is written that you can do this, and but and then Jesus said yes, but that is also written. So yes, there's some there's some if you if you take a, a verse out of context, you would get something like kill every every. Uh, uh, atheist that comes along your way and tries to seduce you. But that's not, that's not uh, the message of the Bible as a whole. So, uh, it, it's, uh, I, I, what I try to say is, is uh, um, it's impossible for you to say that I, I'm not following the Bible as a consistent whole. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, did you have more to say or should I respond to no, you can respond, sir. Okay. Um, so if you take uh, certain verses out of context, you miss the point of the Bible as a whole. Um, I, can ag I can agree with that. Like with any book, if you take a certain verse, passage, or quote out of context, you miss the point of the entire book. Um, however, I would it would be a hard bargain to convince me that the Bible as a whole is, is, a, is, a, is a book about you know, positive morality and things like that. But even if you could do that, I could convince you that Harry Potter is a positive mor moral example, but that doesn't make it any more true, right? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> also, um, you, you make a good point, for me, I'm afraid, <laughs> that yes, the Bible does contradict itself quite often. Yes, the Bible says thou shalt not murder, but it also says... Murder gays, murder atheists, murder shitty children, murder your slaves, but not too quick. It says to murder lots of people, and it also says don't murder. I mean, even the story of receiving the Ten Commandments, Moses, what did he do? He went up, uh, he went up the, the mountain, and he was like, what up, right. God? Give me some commandments, yo. And God was like, here you go. He, I assume he was reading them on the way down. Obviously, one of them was don't murder. And then he got to the bottom... And everybody was like worshiping a cow, and he was like, "Screw this! Murder yourselves!" And everybody around you, like, it's just highly contradictory. Um, and it's hard to the, the thing about a contradictory book is that if you read it from the perspective that you already believe it's going to be right, you're already you're told by your parents it's going to be right, you're told by your church it's going to be right, something like that then you will very easily gloss over the parts that are not right mm -hmm. and you will, you know, not morally right, and you'll read the parts that you like and you'll keep those. And mm -hmm. furthermore, you can... <clears throat> I've heard people simultaneously reference, you know, we shouldn't uh, let gays marry, 
because the Bible says that it's an abomination, but I wouldn't kill gay people because that rule doesn't matter anymore. So they're, they're simultaneously holding two opinions based on one verse, which they also claim is contradictory of the entire Bible. And it's just hard to see how that can be a valid, justifiable viewpoint, given that, you know, they're saying that it, it contradicts itself. Mm. Yes. Um, about the major contradiction, if you want to go in there into that separately, we can. Um, uh, for most of them, there are answers also. For some, some smaller ones, I should say that we can also say that we don't know. But for the major ones, for example, like the one that uh, uh, you mentioned, Moses uh, killing the people, um, the, I can explain to that, and if you want me to, I can go into that. Um, it basically comes down to there's a difference between uh, one person murdering another one in the Bible and uh, the wrath of God and uh, 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 the punishment of God. So, and God uses sometimes uses his people to, uh, as his instrument to punish other people. That does not mean that they are murdering somebody. So that's what I was trying to say. You need, need to read that in a whole. Mm -hmm. uh, it, do you want, do you want to, to go there? Yeah, I, I just want to respond to that really quickly. Um, okay. it, it's not just murder. And you, you can say it's God's punishment and that he has the right to punish people. And okay, I can kind of accept that, even though these aren't fair things to punish people for and it's a ridiculous punishment, I think. But what about the things that aren't punishments? The horribly immoral things, like women not being allowed to speak, forcing them to be subservient to their men, or allowing people not only to have slaves, but to beat their slaves, as long as, and even if they beat their slaves to death, as long as their slaves don't die for a couple days. And it's not just about murder, and it's not just about punishment. It's about all these rules laid out that, that just you, a moral person in today's society, with our, you know, inbuilt moral ideals, cannot possibly accept these ideas. And, and my point of bringing that up is just to say that we have our own morality. We don't get it from God. We don't get it from the Bible. It's in us. We evolved with it. And it came with our... It, it's, a, it's a fixed package with, with society. Mm. Um, just quickly, your point... I don't want to get too withdrawn into this point because we're getting. I don't want to be uh, at fault of getting too away from them from the major debate um, uh, about your mention about slaves. That's also once again not looking at the whole perspective. Ephesians six verse nine um, uh, says, "And masters treat your slave, uh, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them, since you know that." We, you is both a master and yours is in heaven, and there is no favoritism with him. Um, so once again, yes, this is. A, a, I find co a, a lot of misconceptions among atheists, and I believe there is a lot of misconceptions among uh, uh, creationists. As uh, uh, what was that other guy in our previous hangout, uh, Lou. Jarvis? Oh yeah, Lou. Yeah, have and that is um, that. Uh, uh, we have make statements of things that we don't know. So I try try not to try not to make any statements of things that I, I don't know. So and I just wanted to point out that um, uh, about the slaves and I can find you thing, uh, passages about this uh, about what you mentioned about women. Also, it's not the picture that the world the Bible is not the picture that the world paints it, but it's the picture that it paints for itself. So the world would like to be yes, the Bible allow you to kill and slaves and hit slaves. No, it clearly it does not. If you look at Ephesians six nine. Uh, um, about women, I can give you passages for that as well. I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I think you might have uh, Ephesians 6, 9 wrong. Uh, Ephesians is is telling slaves to o obey their earth, earthly masters in 6, 5. Yes, 6, 5, and then go to 6, 9, and the, he first addresses slaves, and then oh, go, he goes to the masters. So okay. first the slaves, and then the masters. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, isn't that also condoning slavery? Uh, as a whole, the Bible does not uh, uh, have anything 
against it and he does not uh, uh, promote it either. What happened was in the uh, uh, why slavery, as a se in this sense, uh, the Bible condones, as you mentioned, is what <coughs> when the uh, uh, somebody gets in debt. What what happens in America if somebody gets in debt and, uh, 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 for example, in a bank, etc. So that is a that is a, uh, a way to to uh, uh, treat debt. Um, and uh, uh, if so, if you owe somebody something, you can become his slave and work that off. Um, uh, so in uh, basically the same thing that happens if you, you, you in America if you become a, uh, 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 in debt to the bank, you become a slave. You work for the bank. Um, but in the Bible, it also talks about how you should uh, buy slaves from your neighbors. And it's not necessarily somebody who's just in debt. It's somebody who's been bought, who's an indentured, uh, an indentured servitude. Um, and, it, and it, I mean, it, we can all agree what? nowadays, I think, that <clears throat> owning slaves is wrong. But the Bible here... You said it doesn't have an opinion one way or another, so I assume that means that God doesn't have an opinion one way or another. Otherwise, he probably no, would, no. would have. No, no. What I was trying out. to say it doesn't condone it and it doesn't condemn it. Right. So, it, so it teaches that when it's happen, when when it is happening, it should happen in the right way. Okay. Um, wouldn't it have been better for God to just say, "By the way, guys." Since we're talking about morality here, and since I'm teaching you all these morals, don't have slaves. Just general rule. I mean, it, it is supposed to be, as you were saying, a moral teacher. Yes, yes, but but uh, uh, what you see, what is happening, uh, uh, why the slave system? And I'm putting that between parentheses. A slave system can be good, is, uh, and that's how it's supposed to happen. Is, is it gives. Um, uh, option for somebody not to be in the street. Um, for is, if somebody lost everything, he could go and, um, I don't know what's the English word for that, is uh, um, uh, uh, somebody that works for, uh, that lives on somebody's other, other's farm and works for him. And yes, in parenthesis, he's his slave. But actually what's happening is he's living on the on his owner's land and is having a chance to uh, work to produce food for his, him and his family and to, uh, to have a good life in the sense that otherwise he would have been on the street. But he's free to leave. Yes, and yes, yes, and that is why um, uh, uh, in the, in the New Testament, you'd see that uh, uh, Paul's writing that he, uh, to, uh, to one of uh, slave's master, and he said, uh, set him free. So we should differentiate between slaves as uh, this is my property, he's working for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I should just find that word, uh, uh, somebody that works on somebody's other's farm. Uh, I, I know what you're talking about, but um, <coughs> but like you said, the Bible doesn't... We're, when I say slaves, I'm referring to indentured uh, servants. And the Bible doesn't say anything against that. In fact, it seems to condone it, if anything. If anything. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if it is supposed to be a moral teaching... Why doesn't it say, don't have slaves, and, you know, maybe don't rape? How about that one? Instead of, if you, if you rape somebody, uh, you have to pay their fathers some money, and then they have to marry you. I mean, that's, again, that kind of thing. They, they could have gone one way or, or another, or they could have just not said anything at all. They could have said, you know, rape is okay which is what they seem to have done, or they could have said rape is not okay, or they could have just basically not talked about rape. But instead, no, but they, they said rape is okay, not only is it okay, but you have to marry your rapist and, as long as he pays your dad some money. Uh, I think you're, you're, taking, uh, you're taking that out of context. Um, 
and uh, I would uh, implore you to give me an example in the New Testament where anything like that is said. Well, I don't have an example from the New Testament. The New Testament doesn't um, sort of undo any of that, though. And in the New Testament, in the Sermon on Mount Sinai, Jesus said that he's not come to undo one one uh, jot or titter, titter of the old law. Yes, no, I, I, I'm not making a difference between the, 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 the Old and the New Testament. But then there's also written, and that's what the, Jesus said to the devil, not that I'm Jesus or you're the devil, um, <laughs> the, <laughs> it's also written, and then you can go to First uh, Timothy three, how you should treat your wife. Um, so, oh, this is I should just uh, stop this. Sorry. Um, yeah. So, how you should treat your wife. So, it's 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 not clear cut. It's, you cannot just make a point. The Bible condones slavery, or the Bible condones. Uh, raping or uh, right. something like that. Um, and just in the same way as I cannot say evolution condones uh, raping because you know it is uh, the best for me to make sure I get produced, my sperm gets produced in every single woman that comes across my way. Right. You know? And, and so it kind of does. I mean, uh, not evolution in a sense does condone rape, just not within a societal not once we developed far enough that we had societal groups. Um, and in fact, that's pretty much all procreation is rape, in a sense. Um, uh, but, but I see your point. Why are you busting um, my nuts about this? I just, <laughs> I just, I just, I just, I want you to, I want you to realize that, um, that, that saying, saying nothing at all about rape is not the same, I mean, ideal situation, he says, hey guys, don't rape. Um, <clears throat> situation that is, I guess, sort of acceptable, he doesn't say anything about rape. The most obscene situation is where he says, rape's okay as long as you pay the chick's dad and also then you marry her. No, but that's not, that's not the only thing, like I said, First Timothy 3, I, should, I could get the, uh, the specific verse if you want. Uh, how women should be treated. So it is. You, you, you cannot take the no, no, one I, example. That's the only thing that's said about this. I know. I, I do see what you're saying, but but that I uh, that's again to the my Bible point that also, it's the Bible also the Bible the Bible does also does not teach us anything about um, internet crimes or um, uh, uh, yeah uh, intellectual property rights or whatever. The Bible is not a rule book of every single thing in the in the in the uh, humanity. I understand. I, I'm not saying that it is, but, yeah. but that goes back to the point uh, what you said before about how it also talks about how to treat women well. That goes back to my point that it is self-contradictory. And if, if a book says both that a thing is okay and that it is not okay, you can apply your own morality to it, and it seems like a brilliant moral book as long as you kind of disregard the bad parts and keep the parts you already agree with. Yes. Um, uh, I will respond to that question. Uh, I, I, I want to get to you the right answer now. I've recently read something very good about this. Um, in the meantime, just to uh, keep the conversation going, um, on a side note, have you... Uh, uh, you mentioned at the beginning about... Uh, 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 correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, uh, creation not contributing to science, something in that in that sense. Hmm. Oh, uh, yes. Or, or, um, there's no there's no uh, scientific uh, 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 crea creation of evidence, something yeah, something like that. No. Uh, yeah, there, there's my my position is that there's no evidence for evolution. At the very least, I've never seen any. Um, and open, oh, I would love to hear some, uh, to hear about some, to see uh, some kind of a study or something about yeah, creationism. Have you have you um, uh, heard about uh, Gödel's theory? Say that again. Gödel. I don't. Uh, Kurt Friedel Gödel. He he wrote the incompleteness theorem. Can you give me a little primer on it? 
so uh, I can give you. Uh, I'll send you a, a link for that. Okay. Uh, basically, what it is is as proving, uh, theorizing that uh, uh, um, something cannot be. Uh, everything cannot be known from ourselves. Mm. I agree that w we cannot know everything. There are things uh, which will always be unknown to us. Yes, no, that's not what it's saying. It's saying that knowledge comes from the outside. Uh, let me just get you the... Okay. Oh. Um, uh, I'm checking into it right now. Okay. And... Uh, but you might want to explain it as much as you can for anybody that's that's watching, so they don't have yes. to. Yes, 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 yes. Let me just get that. Uh, I had a. Ah, here it is. Which one? And then I should get back to you about something about oh contradictions in the Bible. Yeah. Uh, I have so many links open now. This is, I mean, this looks like a, yeah, this is a mathematical theory. Yeah. Uh, not the same as, um, he's talking about axiomatic systems within mathematics. It's not the same as, like, uh, a theory of the universe. It's not to say that we can't no. know things about reality. He was talking about math. Uh, if you, basically what this, um, uh, Hedel is saying is, he's, he's starting with the liar's paradox. For example, I am lying. Mm -hmm. That's self-contradicting. Um, as if it's so, he converted that paradox into a mathematical formula. Uh, and what it says is, no statement alone can completely prove itself true. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. And uh, uh, well, actually, I'm not sure if I do. I am saying this sentence right now. It's kind of self-fulfilling, right? Proves itself true. But uh, but I see your point. You can you can go ahead and move on. I get your point. Is there a way to to send? Uh, I have never really uh, hang out. Um, is there a way to s uh, type or so everybody can see it? Uh, yeah, in the chat. If you hit the chat at the top left there. Oh yes, great. That'll open up a panel. Oh yeah, I see just a couple of discussions here. Okay, here is. Uh, uh, link that uh, is a, uh, a very uh, easy explanation of Qdos here. It's not the complete one that Sydney posted. Okay. Uh, yes, so you can read that sometime. I found that very good. Um, if you want to, I can send you also a list of scientists um, and their works. Uh, of creation scientists. Okay. Um, Here's the thing, though. There's there's never been a single, um, let's say, scientific paper that's shown compelling evidence of creationism that was peer reviewed. Um, <clears throat> so so nobody's so, so ever. Can you, can you complete uh, restate that? There's never been a claim by creationists which was scientifically supported by evidence and peer-reviewed, reviewed by other scientists and challenged, which is part of the scientific process. How can you say that? Is it, it, is it, do, you, do you believe this for a fact? Yeah, that, that, yeah. I mean, I know a lot of people have published things online that, you know, like, um, the creation science ministries and things like that, um, but not in like a in like a scientific journal or something like that. Okay, I mean, I'll basically, keep... basically they're just claims and no review. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yes, I understand what you're saying. I'll get you some uh, some links. I think that's completely wrong. Um, uh, I'll I'll and get I, you some. I want to be clear. I'm not. I'm not saying that creationists haven't. What I mean is that there's been. Um, they haven't done it for creationism. 
Do you know what I mean? Like there hasn't been. I'm not saying that no creationist has written scientific peer-reviewed papers. I'm saying that nobody has done a scientific peer-reviewed and accepted paper on creationism. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's wrong. I'll I'll, gi I'll I'll give you some links after the after the. Uh, After okay. the debate, I'll give you some 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 links, and I will send them to everyone, and they can read that read that for themselves. <coughs> okay. Um, yeah. I don't suppose you have any um, a name or a title or anything like that that people can Google if they're watching. Yeah. Um, they can. Uh, uh, Paul Ockerman. Uh, how do you spell that? It's P A U L A C K E R R M A N. Got it. And James Allen. Okay. Um, Two L's. A N. paper. Okay. I see one called uh, four. No, that's not it. I don't see any papers by him. He's the, he's the one that wrote it. You're saying? Yeah. Okay. I, maybe yeah. You, maybe while I look for this, you can give me the gist of uh, of, of that paper or some paper uh, on creationism. Yeah, I I've just I've just scanned some of the papers, so I I would do this wrong to 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 uh, to. To try and try and uh, uh, I'm like I said I'm not an uh, 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 scientist I I know very little about science so I will do it very wrong if I try and to rephrase that but okay. I will I will uh, give you some links at the end um, I, I did find um, Ackerman's uh, paper um, it was peer reviewed and then shot down within like a second shot down over and over and over. Um, in fact, there are some, some really good rebuttals by novices as well. Um, and his claims are rather out there. I mean, he's, he, 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 um, he, his, paper, his, his scientific paper is full of logical fallacies, like, uh, uh, like an argument from... Uh, in the very first chapter, argument or in the very first paragraph, argument from uh, authority. Um, and so, you know, obviously it was shot down very quickly. Um, what what I meant was peer-reviewed and then accepted scientific papers, accepted so uh, that haven't been refuted already. Because a lot of scientists come up with with papers that they submit to peer review, and then it gets refuted. Um, in fact, uh, Richard Dawkins had a professor who, um, you know. I don't know if you've heard this story before, but he had dedicated his life to um, a particular hypothesis. Um, and eventually he had another professor come over and guest teach in his class. And that professor showed new evidence that decimated this guy's hypothesis, just proved it totally radically wrong. And so this guy learned that he was wrong. And this thing that he's devoted his entire life to, and he... Uh, and he fanatically shook this guy's hand and said, thank you, I've been wrong all this time, and now I know. Um, whereas with these creationist type of papers, they submit it to peer review, and it gets decimated in five seconds, and then they somehow claim victory. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but, yeah, I understand what you mean. But, <laughs> now, now, you say, I can... I'm sure I'll find if you if you give me uh, uh, any paper from a uh, uh, evolutionist viewpoint, I can find some rebuttal from a, 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 a creationist viewpoint also. No, but so I'm talking about scientists. This is how the scientific method works. Anyone can submit a paper for for peer review. I can submit yeah. a paper for peer review that says unicorns are real. That doesn't make it a legitimate claim. No, no, that's but not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is that uh, uh, anybody can uh, uh, for for every every 
evolutionist paper that you can bring me, I can bring you a, a contradicting creationist paper. But we're not talking about just papers. We're talking about peer review. We're talking about other people looking at your claims and looking at your evidence and, you know, doing tests to verify it and um, doing independent observations of your evidence and every time these creationist claims are decimated. They're either uh, misinformed, they misunderstood, or they're just plain wrong. There's never been one single... That is, that is the, no, no, you can't say that because you haven't looked at everything. I, I haven't looked at everything, but I don't, I don't need to look at everything to know that one particular thing doesn't exist because I've looked for it. If, I mean, if you can give me... Uh, and I'm, I'm not just looking for links here because we're, we're having a, a live sort of a, a debate and other people are watching. Um, so if you can give me any kind of you know, arguments from their papers or anything like that, um, and keep in mind, we're, we're, we're looking for evidence of creationism. Can you even give me an example of what their evidence may have been? Ignore the claims, ignore the evidence, or I'm sorry, ignore the, ignore the end result. What was the... Uh, claim that they were making as evidence. Uh, sorry, uh, okay. so I'm asking you all the time to repeat yourself, but it's, I, uh, it's a, I totally uh, understand. Yeah. Um, so you're you're saying that there are all these scientific papers on creationism, but what do you know? What even one of them has actually claimed? is evidence for creationism. Why do I know that... What, what has even one of... Just give me one example of what any of them have claimed as evidence for creationism. Like, creationist and evolutionist, Christians, non-Christians, have the same evidence, the same facts. Okay? So we have the same earth, everything is the same. Mm-hmm. The difference is the way we interpret them. Okay, so, oh, okay. so we uh, interpret the facts differently because we have different uh, uh, worldviews, world presuppositions. Well, uh, okay, I can kind of accept that. Um, but do you know, again, can you give me an example of <coughs> um, a claim by a creationist for creation or by anyone for creationism that was evidence based i should say can you can you show me any evidence or show me what their claim was and we can talk about the evidence i would, uh, i c yes I, c I will find some things uh, uh like i said from the beginning i'm not a, i i don't know about the science i'm not about okay. i i so i I could refer you to something. That's why I opened my debate also with not from a, a, a scientific viewpoint, but from a moral, uh, moral viewpoint. Okay. Um, can can uh, I just say, if you, if you want to take some time, maybe we can continue this part of the debate later. I'd be more than glad to have a second session with you later on, and we can yes. move on to something else for right now. Yes, that's probably good. And, but uh, I have to say, I won't be... Uh, 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 debating from a scientific viewpoint because I would do that wrong. Uh, uh, I would do the my side wrong if I to. Uh, uh, you would say something and I wouldn't know if you are you are referring you are uh, uh, proving it wrong or it's just something that you say. You can mm -hmm. say any term to me and I can start debating in Chinese or in, in German or in Spanish, and that wouldn't make sense to any one of us. Sure. So, so, so I. I, w I can I can do some a, a little bit of research on this. I uh, 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 I have some uh, uh, what do you call that uh, uh, resources on this, but I won't be debating that then because uh, that's like asking uh, 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 asking you to debate in Chinese or in German. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> so. Um, can I then present something which I think is, is really simple, doesn't require a lot of background in science or anything like that? Yes, and uh, uh, also, uh, before we finish, I would like to 
just make five points on the um, uh, the uh, contradictions in scripture because I said I would come back to that. Oh, okay, sure. No, but you you can go first. Oh, okay. Um, then let me share my screen real quick. <coughs> so I'm going to talk about if creationism were true and if evolution were true, we can make predictions. Ignore evidence. Imagine that we're not worried about evidence at all. Um, we have a wild and crazy idea of evolution and a wild and crazy idea of creationism. How do we determine without evidence which one is, without direct evidence for either one, which one is uh, more accurate? We make mm -hmm. predictions. So we say, if creationism were true, I would see this and that and the other thing. And if evolution were true, I would see, you know, this, that, and the other. Please, uh, sorry, hang on one second. Okay, um, <clears throat> so these are the layers of the Earth's crust. There's only one principle that we all have to accept to move on. Uh, the higher layers of the Earth's crust will never be older than the lower layers, and the lower layers of the Earth's crust will never be newer than the higher layers. Correct? Yes. All right, cool. Then we can move on. Now, if creationism were true, if everything were created all at once, um, regardless of whether or not you believe in microevolution within species, um, still, if everything were created all at once, what you would see is that the, at the lowest layers of the Earth's crust, you would see fossils for all of the species that have ever existed. And not necessarily every species would appear in every layer, but you know, certainly if there were a species in the top layer, you would find it in at least almost every single lower layer, especially if it was very common. Um, and more importantly, you would never, ever, ever, even once, find a species in the higher layers of the Earth's crust that were not in any of the lower layers, any of them at all. So in the beginning, at the lowest layers of the Earth's crust, you have all of the species that have ever existed. And as you move up through time, you'll see certain species die off, like dinosaurs die off, dragons or leviathans or whatever it described in the Bible, they die off, and so mm -hmm. on and so forth, until eventually you reach present time where you have a certain set of species um, that all of the species that exist then were also in the lower layers. That's what you'd see if creationism were true and evolution were not true. If evolution were true, you would see the lowest layers of the Earth's crust consisting of a small number of very simple life forms, like this green circle. And as you move up through the layers, you would see those life forms evolve into slightly more complex life forms, like this yellow octagon, sorry, hexagon. And as you can see, the hexagon is very similar to the circle. It could have evolved from the circle uh, in this metaphor. And as you move up through the layers, you might find some species die out. Green circle is no more. But in the meantime, it branched off into pink pentagon as well. So we have pink pentagon, pentagon and yellow um, hexagon. And the evolutionary pressure from having both of these, which are in this metaphor so well suited for that environment, uh, the evolutionary pressure caused green circle to die out. So they kind of choked out its resources. And as you move up, new species emerge in higher layers, like this red diamond that weren't in any of the lower layers. And here at the very top, we can see an extreme example of that. The purple triangle appears at the very top two layers only, and none of the lower layers. And it's not anything like the first, but every step along the way appears related. Fucking science. And that's exactly what we see, in fact. If we look at the fossil record, we see precisely this and nothing even close to this. Mm. So, so um, how would you respond to that as, as evidence for evolution as compared with creationism? Can you, can you just switch to the, to the, uh, the other one? The, um, yeah. Uh, what you, yeah, that's one. 
Um, the 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 one thing that I uh, know from the a creationist uh, standpoint is that uh, the flood messed everything up. Mm -hmm. But so, uh, sorry, go ahead. I, I didn't mean no. to. No, no, it's fine. That's basically what I wanted to say. So okay. the uh, you would see that uh, uh, things are different. You get. Uh, some species on the top, some species at the bottom, and mm -hmm. you don't see your perfect lines because there was a flood and it basically made layers and mixed layers that uh, uh, would not have made, uh, uh, been on their own. Okay, so number one, the flood would have kicked things up randomly, not in this perfect progression which we see. It would not, for example, appear that the species in the second layer evolved from the species in the first. They wouldn't necessarily be so similar. We would see, um, sometimes we would see the lowest layers and then immediately below that, or I'm sorry, uh, the lowest layers we'd see something, you know, like green circle and immediately above that we'd see something crazy, complicated and advanced like a uh, purple triangle, you know. Mm. Um, mm. At least once we'd see some dichotomy like that and we'd be scratching our heads going, how the heck did that happen? And if that happened even one time, we would have to throw evolution out the window, or geography, or I'm sorry, geology, or archaeology. We'd have to throw one of them out the window. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and furthermore, the the dating, the radiometric carbon dating, for all of these wouldn't agree with the layers in which they were. Furthermore, these layers are layers now of rock. I mean, they're very firm, very hard. No flood, even a, even a one-year-long flood, could have um, kicked up that much stone and set it down again as stone. Because keep in mind, um, okay, so let's say that did happen. Let's say somehow the floodwaters kicked up all of these solid sedimentary layers of, you know, silt and mud and then and then just basically just hard ass stone imagine that did happen how did it then lay them down and allow them to recompact into all these you know very firm layers and and and, and again we agreed to begin with that the 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 top layers are always newer than the bottom layers right so you weren't thinking of the flood when you said that i understand but but you have to realize it's it's definitely true. Mm. Also, the idea of the flood is just it's just so very silly. There are so many things wrong with it, and I, I can come at it from a zillion different angles. We know, for example, the exact dimensions of the ark. It was something like 405 feet long, about 30 feet wide, if I recall. Um, the Titanic is way bigger than the ark was, and you couldn't fit one tenth of one tenth of one tenth of one percent of all the species in one region, let alone on all of Earth, onto the Titanic. And mm -hmm. you couldn't fit food for an entire year for all of them on the Titanic. Even if you ignored all the animals, you couldn't fit all the food on there. And, and, and again, going back to my original point, even if I grant you the point of the flood, it still doesn't jive with what we actually see in the fossil record. Also, as Marcus points out in the chat, animals eat other animals. <laughs> so go ahead and re uh, respond to that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> you uh, you make some fairly good points, and I'm uh, uh, I'm I, I must admit I'm I'm really not as deep in in this uh, uh, subject as you are. So. Uh, I would have to 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 lie over now and uh, pee my pee on myself <laughs> um, <laughs> and let you smell everything you want to smell. But uh, <laughs> I assume that's like a saying in South Africa or something. <laughs> it's yeah. not literally going to happen. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's okay. Good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I I would like to to continue this debate. Uh, uh, I must also. Uh, I would like to. I'm, I'm willing to debate again on uh, live. Um, okay. I would prefer to. Now? 
Yes, yes, I have a, a test in 20 minutes. Okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, 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 so, so I have to go. And I, I want, I want to keep talking on this. Uh, mm -hmm. I can state one thing for for certain: is um, okay. uh, I don't feel shaken in my belief at any point. Um, okay. uh, that's the nature of belief. Luckily for me. Uh, the other point that I uh, would like to make is that, uh, well, that I would like to say is that uh, I I like the way you debate, so I would like to continue that. Uh, cool. Thank you. Most m most of the people that I tend to talk with this, they tend to just uh, uh, make fun of of uh, arguments instead of refuting them. So thanks mm -hmm. for that as well. Absolutely, and you. Uh, exactly the same. Thank you for being, you know, willing to listen and and uh, and really take active part in this conversation. Um, thank you also to our viewers and to our uh, our participants here in the in the chat who have been, uh, you know, uh, talking with us as well a little bit on the side. Um, <clears throat> Andres, I would definitely like to see you again in another debate, um, and maybe you can uh, do some research on some of the things that we talked about, and you can. You know, talk with me a little bit about those things as well. I understand. You know, I can't expect you to know everything about everything. So, if you need some time to come up with your response, I'd still love to hear it later on. I'm sure we can just pick up where we left off. Okay. And uh, as I said, uh, uh, the the science uh, uh, and uh, I feel I feel very bad about this because uh, I I strongly disagree that there is a. a, a I strongly disagree with the saying, with the saying that it is uh, creation versus science, because mm -hmm. that's what I, I I don't believe that to be, and that's what not what I've read so far. Um, but uh, uh, the the bad thing is, is I'm not a scientist, so I cannot represent the creation as science part. So. Uh, yeah. That's okay. Viewers can make up their own minds. I think it's important. I, I don't debate to convince you, I debate to convince anyone who might be listening or watching. Um, <clears throat> and I also want to mention before you go, if there's one thing I want you to really have a think about, it's think about that thing that we talked about, about how um, you, if you're born a schizophrenic and you take meds to control it, if you're born depressed and you take meds and it changes who you are as a person, changes your mannerisms, your beliefs, sometimes your memories, everything about you then what is it that could possibly exist as a soul? What, what is it that is the you that survives your death? And I think that would be a really great place to pick up our next discussion, uh, if you'd like to do that. Does that sound good? Yeah, yeah that seems good to me. Yeah. Awesome. All right, thanks for coming, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, and you can have the last word if you want to say anything else. No, no, that's all. Thanks, Tim. Uh, uh, thank you for the opportunity. And uh, uh, I can just support you that you said, uh, you said you're not debating to... Uh, change anybody's mind. If I had to change anybody's mind with my debate, I think I would have sucked. But uh, I debate just to uh, because I'm interested in the subject and to learn about the subject. So, yep, it's very intellectually stimulating uh, talking to you. And thank you very much for your time, sir. I appreciate it. Cheers, guys. All right, thanks. Bye. No. Hello, uh, Marcus and Sydney. I'm going to go ahead and end broadcast here. I hope it doesn't kick you guys out.